Today I am going to take you all along with me to my favorite antique spot and show you some of my latest thrift finds as well as make some more progress on the little nursery that's right off the side of my room and then prepare for next week's video which I'm really excited about. It is a beautiful, beautiful fall day, and we finished school early. I've got some free time. The baby is napping, and I think I've shared this before, but we live on the farm with my in-laws, so I have the luxury of, you know, running errands when I need to. And today I'm gonna go thrifting, and I'm gonna hit my favorite antique spot. I've been meaning to take you guys along and show you this spot, but it has just been a really long time since I've been. So I'm gonna head out while the baby's napping, hopefully get my thrifting and antiquing in. And if I'm lucky, I might even make it home before he wakes up. It is so beautiful this time of year in the Midwest. Definitely a perk of Midwest living is getting a good taste of all four seasons and you know fall is probably if I had to pick it would I would say it's probably my favorite we're heading into our slower time of year and I just have more time to do fun stuff like go antiquing so you always know when there's a bunch of junk out front of an antique store that it's gonna be a good one that's when you know you're gonna find treasures when you have to pick through junk all right, so let's go inside. This is my favorite spot that I've been meaning to take you guys to. This place is absolutely huge. You know, I could spend hours in here, but I only have an hour today. I wanna to get in and out in an hour so that I we can hopefully hit some thrift shops too, because this is in, it's one town over, but we don't usually go to this town. So I wanna check it all out while we're up here. So already in the entrance, I'm finding lots of cute stuff. Look at this handmade really old rocking chair for twenty dollars that's a steal if i needed a rocking chair i would get it or you know if i was trying to make a little money i might buy it and resell it on facebook marketplace all right i found this frame i've got vivi on the camera right now she is my thrifting and antiquing buddy we just love this we could do it all day and we don't have any of the boys with us so it's just we're really enjoying ourselves so i found this frame and uh, the artwork isn't exactly the best, but it's $10 and this is heavy, it's solid. So I can just take the backing out and put a canvas or a family photo or anything like that in here. And it will be perfect, so I'm gonna grab this. Big antique shops like this with lots of junk. It's also a great place to find supplies if you're building a home and you want old, you know, solid wood pieces like doors or like this really long piece, you could cut it down into a mantle or something. Lots of possibilities. Um, another thing that I find a lot at antique shops is uh, fabric and like really good vintage fabric that is, you know, hand embroidered and you can make aprons, you can make little girls pajamas, lots of possibilities. Now, quilts, this one on top was so beautiful, and I was really hoping I might get it for a steal, but it turns out that they knew it was beautiful, and they had it marked accordingly $225. It's worth that. I'm not going to pay that, though, because I could get it for something like this for a couple bucks at the right thrift shop. So you can see Vivi here is just enjoying herself uh, with all the vintage -y pieces. She loves this. She is my little antiquing buddy. I mentioned recently that uh, antique shops, great place to find butter molds, handmade butter molds. And sure enough, I found a few today. This one was, gosh, maybe 20 bucks. Yeah, 20. So not too bad considering it's old, it's handmade. You get that vintage vibe. Now this was the most beautiful piece I found. I don't need it. I don't have anywhere to put it. It's so tall, as you can see, way taller than the standard pieces uh, by its side, but just gorgeous. And honestly, that is not a bad priced if you really want a large statement piece this thing this wardrobe was in such good shape but i just don't need it well all i ended up getting was the frame i found some things that i liked but honestly it just wasn't what i need to finish the nursery and i just didn't see anything that i had to have i saw a beautiful plant stand that i really wanted but it was 135 dollars, and i just don't 
spend that much when I'm thrifting and antiquing. That's part of the reason why I go thrifting and antiquing. So, you know, usually it's very rare, unless it's a very big piece um, that's going to be like a central piece in my home, then I don't spend over a hundred dollars. I mean, usually I don't spend over 10. So I just passed on that left with my one little frame. And honestly, that is part of the art of thrifting and antiquing is knowing when to walk away because you know, you're always going to find really cool stuff, but if you don't need it, then it's just junk that's going to accumulate in your house and it's just baggage. It's like weighing you down. I don't know. That's a huge pet peeve of mine is just having junk around. So I left with my one item, but we have one more stop. We're going to go to a thrift shop in the town that we're in right now. And then actually I just remembered that I have to take the kids into the other town <laughs> that's close to us later tonight. So I'll probably have a couple of hours free and there's another thrift spot over there. I sound like such such a nerd, <laughs> all my thrift spots. There's another thrift spot in that town that I might hit up tonight too. So, you know, there's still hope for finding what I need for the nursery today, but it's just not looking good. I didn't find, I was looking for the, a little table from beside my rocking chair. I was hoping to find some more frames for my gallery wall. and It's not happening, but we'll see, we will see. So I found some really pretty pieces at the next thrift shop and you know, they were, this was a great deal. $40. Look at this piece right here. It was just gorgeous. And I found a little writing desk that was also super cheap, but I don't need them. I don't need them right now. We have some projects coming up that I could potentially use them for, but I just didn't need them today. So I had to walk away. So even though I didn't have luck at the first stop we made with antiquing and thrifting, I was able to run in my favorite go-to spot, like the thrift shop I go to every week. I ran in there last night thinking, you know, I've, I was here last week. There can't be that much new stuff, but let's just see what I can find. And I hit the jackpot. I got so many treasures. So let me show you what I got. I found this cute, cute little basket here, and I'm gonna use this in the nursery for toys. This will be really good for just his little tractors and toys we have in there. This was $3.99. I also found a set of five of these false graph mugs. I think I'm saying that right. So you guys know that I really like false graph pieces. Not all of them, but I like some of them. So these will be perfect on open shelving or for vlog photos. That set was $3.99. This set was also $3.99. So I got another set set of five of uh, false craft mugs. These are just plain white little mugs here. And once again, I got these with blog photography in mind. I am going to start trying to pick back up with blogging. This is just, I, I've shared this before. This is a hobby for me and I don't want it to ever become anything more than that. So there's only so much time I'm willing to put in. However, there are little things that I can actually find um, people to help me with. So I, of course, do all the video. I do all of the photos. I do all of the recipe writing. I make up my own recipes, of course. And, you know, you hear my voice. That's obviously my voice. But all the little details and stuff, like making everything look pretty, the stuff that's time-consuming behind the scenes, I can hire somebody to help me with all that stuff. So that's what I'm going to do to try to get my blog back up and running. So I have been trying to keep my eye out for just pretty plain white dishes that would make really good blog photos and things that also go with what I already have so that I can actually use them. All right, next on the list is this little table here, this little side table. It was $8.99, so very cheap. A little dirty, a little dusty, I need to clean it up. I'm gonna paint this. I've been looking for something this size. This is very small. I've been looking for a really small table for the nursery for a really long time and haven't been able to find one. So I found this, it was cheap, I can paint it. Um, you know, they make furniture paint to where you don't have to do any sanding. It goes on any surface. surface, no sanding, you know, no priming, no prep. You just paint it and you're done. So that is what I plan on doing with this piece. And this next piece here, this quilt rack, it was a splurge considering it came from the thrift shop. It was $8.99, but it's handmade and very old and very solid. I've been looking for a quilt rack to display all of my oldest quilts that I, you know, 
I want them to stay in good shape. I've been looking forever, but a lot of them are just, uh, you know, they're pretty, but they're very lightweight, not very sturdy. I wanted something sturdy, and this definitely fit the description. So I was very happy to find this. These are just some of the quilts that John's grandmother made, and some of them are even older than her, and she actually just passed away last month, and she was 98. So some of these quilts are over 100 years old, and I'm happy I have a pretty place to display them now. Now, the next thing that I found, this was just quite the haul. <laughs> this was $12.99, this little ottoman, out indoor, outdoor ottoman there, or coffee table, whatever you want to call it, but it was just very cute, and I thought it would go well on our front porch. And that wraps it up for today's thrift haul. So now I'm going to get some of this stuff cleaned up and work on the nursery. As you all know, if you've been around for a while, the little nursery that is off of the side of my room is, you know, it's been a work in progress for a long time, and that's because I want it to be genuinely vintage and antique -y. I don't want to go out and buy new things and um, I just haven't had luck finding what I need so even though the color the stain of this little table is not what I want it to be that's really no big deal because I can easily paint it but honestly you'll see here in a moment once I got it into the room I realized that you know it didn't look as bad as I thought it would, even though it definitely doesn't match. And I will paint it, but I, I'm not going to be in as big of a hurry to do that as I thought originally. I have had the same crib mattress for a very long time, for like all of my kids, and I've been a mom for 12 years, so it is time for a new crib mattress. You know, that thing, it, it wasn't like a really nice one to begin with, because I was 21, 22 when I had my first baby, and you know, we just got what we got. Um, so I did get a new crib mattress. I'll show you that. And it's an or a nice organic one. So I'll link it for you. I just took off. a. T I had a toddler rail on the crib, but that wasn't working out. Ernie was getting out of bed all the time. So I actually just took the toddler rail off, turned the crib around rather than putting the other side back on. And we'll do that until he's through that this phase. So you can see I just put the little table um it's a tiny, this is a really tiny little nursery. And so that's a tiny little spot. I needed a little table there in between my rocking chair and the crib. And this was the perfect size. So now I have a little lamp table for evening when I'm reading to the baby and nursing him to sleep. I've got all, all kinds of stuff under the crib. That's just a good little storage space. Cause like I said, this is a very small room, but it works. You know, I don't need a big room for a nursery. This is just perfect. Now this bed skirt, I actually made. So I do so. I'm, um, you know, I can do things, but I, I don't use patterns. I just go by look, kind of like my baking. <laughs> you know, I just look at things and I think about how it was made, how it was put together. And then I measure and cut and I just go. And that's how I sew. So, you know, I'm definitely not professional level, but I was really happy with how the bed skirt turned out. And that material, the fabric that I used actually came from a uh, Facebook marketplace. So this whole room really is uh, very vintage and, and thrifted. So I've got my new little toy basket there, which was very cute in here. Now I need to open up the new mattress. So this was a splurge. It was not cheap, but you know, I'm pregnant again. And we have another baby on the way. So we've got several years more of you know crib and toddler beds and I just it needed to happen I don't know you know I'm I'm in my mid 30s so I don't know if we'll be able to have any more children after this but even if, if we don't I still needed a new mattress so uh this is a super soft sheet this is my favorite crib sheet I will link that in the description for you guys as well. I need to make a list sometime of like my favorite baby and toddler items because it would be a short list. <laughs> There's not much on there. I don't do much as far as baby gear. As you can see, the nursery is pretty minimal, but I do definitely have my favorite things. The next thing I'm going to work on is the gallery wall. Well, I should say it's not a gallery wall now, but I want it to be a gallery wall. It's in, in progress. And you know, I, I'm always picking up frames just like I did today. Anytime I see a cheap frame that, you know, looks like it fits my style, 
I just grab it and I, I keep a stash that way whenever I want to put together a gallery wall or I have something I want to hang up then I have lots of frames to choose from so I've got lots here I don't know if I will use them all but I'm gonna see if I can at least use a few of them frame I'm hanging up now was a dollar I think I showed it on my Instagram stories a couple weeks ago when I was thrifting I just couldn't believe it was such a good find it's um, got you know like an inlay I'll take all of that out and put pretty canvases or you know prints in there so right now these are just frames they're not complete I've still got a lot of work to do on this gallery wall but I'm definitely going to be able to use several of these so we are getting there um, still got a ways to go. You see there's a little shelf over to my left with a candlestick on it. I don't know why that candlestick is there. That's not going to go there. <laughs> I want to find something cute to put there. I just, you know, I'm just not there yet. I'm just still, still searching for all the perfect pieces for this room. But eventually it will all come together. And I've done this enough to know that I will be glad I waited. I'll be glad I was patient rather than going out and buying new things. Now I'm going to tell you about something that is a little bit of a struggle for me, and that is cleaning up the kitchen at night. You know, it's such a good feeling and it's such a great thing to do to put the kitchen to sleep, so to say. You know, get everything finished that way. In the morning, you are ready. You have a clean kitchen, clean surfaces, everything's put away, and it's just ready to go, ready for the day. That's an amazing feeling. I love waking up to that. As you all know, I'm a morning person. I'm not an evening person. I'm especially not an after 8 p.m. person. I just don't have it in me. So, you know, one thing that I do to kind of coax myself into finishing strong in the evening, especially when I know that I have a lot to get done the next morning, is just find a, a good podcast to listen to or something good on YouTube. You know, that can always serve as the motivation I need to put that extra 15 to 20 minutes in and get my work finished because I have so many things that I love to learn about and love to listen to. A lot of it is, um, you know, religion, politics related. So I actually don't listen to homemaking and homesteading content because that's what I do all day. And I've been doing it for years now and it's not that I don't need inspiration or I don't need ideas there's always stuff to learn but I'm just you know I'm set I'm set in my ways I'm set in my routines I have all my base recipes to where if I want to modify and make something new I usually don't need to look anything up for that I could just do it and I've just moved on from that phase of life as far as really listening and gleaning from that type of content and as my children get older, it's more worldview things that I'm trying to listen to and learn from because these are the questions they have. Like, you know, they have the big questions about life and about events that are going on and things that they hear. And I want to be well equipped, you know, not only to teach them, but for my own enjoyment as well. All right. Now, Really quickly, before I end this video and say goodbye for this week, I want to talk about next week's video. I'm going to take you through the process of baking bread for the week for a large family. I mean, I guess you could say we're a large family. There's six, almost seven of us. Um, so that's large by American standards. To me, it's tiny because I hang out with people who have a lot more kids than that. <laughs> but anyway, the process, I'm actually going to film the video tomorrow. So... I'm preparing tonight and the process starts if you're going to do sourdough at least with making sure that your sourdough starter is fed enough so as you can see here I am feeding my starter a lot I want lots of starter for tomorrow when I do my baking and I I'm going back and forth here I'm, I'm uh, cleaning up some cast iron skillets here you know when you wash your skillets you always want to heat them so they're dry and then oil them down again all right so i've got my starter fed here i always do a little bit of rye just a few tablespoons of rye flour and then all-purpose organic unbleached followed by a little bit of water mix it together and that is it so i'm ready for my big baking day tomorrow and you all will get to come along with me all day as i bake our bread for the week